Hey, I'm Caleb with You Can Make This Too, and this is November's prize. But you're here for the couch, which I have plans available for on my website. And considering the end result, despite all the mistakes I made on this project, I'm sure that you can make this too. I found a deal on some walnut beams, and because I needed some thicker than normal pieces for this build, I'll just resaw what I need from these. I could have started with some regular four quarter and six quarter stock, but this is my only chance to know I have big wood. After joining to get two flat faces that are square to each other, that way I have a flat surface on both the table and the fence of the bandsaw, I resaw some pieces about one and three eighths inch thick and some one inch thick boards as well. The bandsaw leaves a rough surface though, so after each cut I go back to the joiner before cutting the next board. Because I jointed between each cut, each board has a good face and a rough face. I'll run them through the planer to get them flat, but before breaking down the material anymore, I need to mark out my pieces. The dimensions on some of the leg parts were driven by getting the seat at the right height and the angles and aesthetic I wanted, so the dimensions on these are really weird and wonky, so I thought it'd be best to print them off and make templates. So I printed them off in my printer last night, stitched them together, but now that I have them down, I realize I didn't do a good job taping them together and my lines are all weird, so I printed it off and I'm gonna do it again. This time, I'm gonna use a straight edge to make sure my straight lines are actually straight. So if you buy the plans and you don't have a printer, print them off big, make sure you use a straight edge to keep everything straight because this is just gonna cause problems. I spray glued the new paper templates to some scrap half inch plywood I had and then set to cutting them out. For the straight cut, I decided to try out my new track saw and it worked great at giving me a straight cut on these angles and saved me having to make a taper jig for my table saw. For the angles on the end, I used the laser on my miter saw to match that angle and then cut them. But some of the angles on the templates were greater than my miter saw could swing over. So I made a quick wedge to clamp against my fence that would bring the angle into the range of my saw and snuck up on the line. For the curves, I go over to the bandsaw and just cut outside the line. For long fair curves like these, I find it easiest to stay on track by using just one hand to move the piece forward and keeping my other hand stationary on the bed to steer the piece. Of course, the bandsaw is a bit rough, so I smooth the curves on my spindle sander. Hand sanding, like all other forms of masochism, is always an option if you don't have a spindle sander. Just you do you. Now I can mark out each of my leg pieces. I take care to avoid any defects and also pick where the grain matches the flow of the piece. So the pieces that are curved, I try to lay out with curving grain. They'll be a bit stronger this way, but mostly it's just gonna look better. For the orange heart, the layout is all about maximizing material. It's pretty expensive, so I'm jigsawing the pieces out of the board I have, and there's not a whole lot of margin for error. To make resawing easy, I break down what I can at the miter station, and then go to the bandsaw. So I'm ready to start gluing up my pinstripe inside my legs, except I did the, did the thing I kept telling myself I wasn't gonna do, because I made two legs. And then I made one of the other two pieces and I just realized I needed two of them. So fortunately I have more material the right thickness so time to, you know, get this caught up. So I'm not doing much larger glue ups than I need and because I need some of the orange heart off cuts in order to make all of my pieces, I tape the legs together and rough cut them on the bandsaw. Here I'm using the orange heart offcut from the long pieces to make the blanks for some of the smaller pieces. A wiser man probably would have cut the walnut to match the orange heart first, but what could go wrong? Anyway, orange heart is a tropical oily wood, so to make sure I won't have any issues with the glue, I wipe it down with mineral spirits to remove any surface oil and then remove the residue once it dries. Then I mix up some two to one total boat epoxy and spread it all out. Because it's not water-based like regular PVA wood glue, the epoxy is another extra bit of insurance that I'm not gonna have any issues gluing the oily orange heart. Starting this, I thought, this isn't gonna go like every other glue up that I've ever done where I get glue everywhere. I'm gonna be neat. 
so I didn't lay out any paper. But then I did get glue everywhere, like I have every other time. So I laid out the brown paper, but of course it got on the outside and I was planning on clamping these together as I did because I don't have enough clamps and this is about a two day cure time. I can't take a week to cycle through clamps. So obviously I don't want to clamp and glue my pieces together with the epoxy. So I was like, well, now I need something to go in between. I was gonna grab brown paper, but then I realized the epoxy will soak through that and probably still bond. So I grabbed the wax paper. And let's just say I really hope that epoxy doesn't stick to wax paper. If it does, I'm gonna be upset. So I jerked the clamps off these to use them, but haven't tried to pull them apart yet. Um, I did some looking and apparently if the wax paper does stick, which happens some, you can wet it and that helps remove the paper pretty good. But so far I'm so good. I'm really worried about this bottom one where I really smushed it. That's, oh, that's actually just where the epoxy built up. So, eh, I think we had a little bit of paper sticking, but it doesn't seem to be bad. Yeah, you can see how this is really smushed. All right. So the wax paper worked. That's a relief. Now time to get the templates and whittle these down. To adhere the templates to my material, I'm using the old tape and CA glue trick that everyone is in love with right now. For CA glue, I've been using Starbond for a few months now and it's been great. I have a discount code below that'll get you 10% discount on their website. Then on to the bandsaw to cut close to the template before using a template bit at the router table. I've made a horrible, avoidable mistake. Um, some of you probably caught this. I followed the chalk lines, but I didn't think to verify the orange heart because the orange heart was smaller than these pieces. So when I make that second cut, yeah, you can see the problem there. Um, like I said, that was very preventable. After I glued up the orange heart, I should have cut the walnut to close to size, redrawn, or just checked. There were several failures here. Um, but the fix I have, since this is just for me, and it's a piece of spec work, so I have an off cut. I'm just gonna get some glue, shove that down there, throw a clamp on it, let it sit. And because the end grain isn't gonna show, it'll be barely noticeable and uh, it's gonna be my fix. And you probably noticed this one when I was gluing up. I didn't notice it till just now when I was about to repair that one. The uh, template overhangs the piece. I don't know what's with me today. Must not have slept well. I turn totally stupid if I don't get enough sleep. So overall, the glue up went okay. The problem is the piece that was already in there wasn't flat, it was pretty ripply. I seeded this uh, best I could and just kind of crossed my fingers and hoped. Didn't work out though. As you can see, I took this to the bandsaw and router table and there was a big chunk on the front of the leg where it was epoxy. So because of that gap, then when I, I cut it, you know, it was a big angle. Um, so to fix that, I'm chiseling this out. I got really frustrated and forgot about the camera and just started working, but decided this might be useful. So here's what I'm doing. This is where that big epoxy line was. So I've chiseled it out and I've got a little splice that I'm just going to CA glue in there. Then I'll flush cut and plane or sand this down and hopefully that comes out a lot better. Now it's time to fix my other mistake and get it caught up. 
As I mentioned earlier, this is this month's Patreon contest prize. There's more information in the description, but basically become a patron, find the contest, leave your answer, and if you win, you'll get the prize. And for final shaping, everything makes it to the router table to be template routed. A freehand router would also work, but my router table has pretty good dust collection when I remember to open the blast gate to it. And I want to keep selling plans for this on my website. With the leg pieces to final shape, I put the drum sander head in my Woodmaster and give them a quick sand. I also hit the straight edges with my joiner plane just to make sure they're dead straight and smooth for the glue up. And to start the joinery process for these legs, I'm going to use dowels. I made some spacer blocks to make sure that my doweling jig is properly positioned and consistent on both sides. I'm about ready to glue up. I'm using one dowel and one screw in each joint. Talk about that later because I know some people are going to disagree. But anyway, I have some 3 8 stock that I'm making the dowels out of. I have some dowels that I bought, but they're a little short for my application. You'll notice that these kind of have these flutes and they're also rounded. They're rounded to help them go in the hole and the flutes help carry the glue. So I'm going to scuff this a little bit just to help give the glue a little bit to some room to move as well as something to bite to chamfer the ends just a little bit and you can chuck this up in the grill drill to chamfer easier but I'm not too worried about chamfering it a lot I'm gonna do some little wedges on each side here so here are my little wedges and you might be able to see this is a little bit flat and again, the idea here is just to give the air, not just the glue, but also the air when I push these in the hole, some a way to get out and a way to let the help the glue spread. I can twist this a little bit and that'll help carry the glue around to make sure I don't rub all the glue off while I push it in. There's a lot of end grain on this glue up. So of course this is long grain, this is end grain. End grain isn't really gonna glue, so I'm not gonna bother trying to get any glue on this joint, all the glue is going to be in the dowel and then my long screws are going to lock everything together and also provide the clamping force so I don't need to worry about gluing that. So I've got a little pad of glue over here, I'm just going to get my dowels nice and sticky, squish them in there. So I'm glue it up a little bit better. Well, inside here, when I drilled that hole, half of the hole is end grain of the orange heart, which isn't gonna glue well. So I lined up those flats with the end grain because it's not gonna be a great bond. That'll, but then I'm making sure that there's plenty of adhesion with the uh, long grain and long grain. Okay, yeah, I already glued one up just to try to figure out best practices. And this is what worked well, is working with it on the ground. So I'm putting a clamp just to help hold things. Now to drill for this screw. I've got a four inch screw and I marked four and a quarter. So this goes just a little bit past the tip. <clears throat> no, I don't want these heads to sit flush. So I've got a countersink bit and I'm gonna countersink this. Okay, now I've got my drill, or my impact set on one. We're gonna go nice and slow. And it's gonna take a while, but that's okay. And I'll do the same thing for the back leg. So this is actually a bit of an afterthought. I really like the idea of the pinstriping on the legs, but I didn't know how I was gonna carry it through the design to make sense. And the other night it hit me that what I could do to tie everything together is to put it on the armrest. So that way it looks like the orange heart is sort of a slice going straight down through the legs and armrest and everything. So. That's what I'm gluing up right now. Off camera, I cut all these pieces. I just went back and forth, made a bunch of test cuts to make sure I had a walnut strip 
the same size, and another orange heart strip, the same size. Of course, this is really oily, so after I cut it, I wiped it down with denatured alcohol this time, which is better than the mineral spirits I used earlier because mineral spirits leaves a little bit of a residue, and I had to wipe that residue off. With the alcohol, I don't have that problem, so should work a little bit better. After the glue dries, I run the armrests through the planer to flush them up. Originally, I was planning on doing a heavy roundover on these, but I decided to go with a light eighth inch roundover instead. Where the router bit doesn't get into the corners, I use files. Okay, I'm gonna get ahead of the comments on how I'm gonna do these legs, cause I'm probably gonna offend a lot of woodworking sensibilities. Feel free to still tell me your outrage in the comments because YouTube still loves it. Engagement is engagement. Anyway, on the armrest, I don't want to do any plugs or anything on the top because I don't want to screw up this finish. I want just nice continuous grain. So that means I can't screw through it. Uh, my other options are dowels. That's what I have. The problem with the dowel is because it's just a circle, most of the glue surface is end grain on whatever it's going perpendicular to. Whatever it's running into parallel wise, there's lots of long grain, side to side grain, so you get a good glue joint, but you know, not on the other piece. Dominoes kind of solve that because since they're oblong, you do have actually a good bit of side grain, if you, especially if you're using wide dominoes. Since I don't have a domino, and I know a lot of you don't, I'm gonna use screws, but I'm gonna screw from underneath in places where it'll be hidden. This is the back leg and the back frame that holds the back cushions is gonna cover this up. So the way we're gonna screw this up into the armrest is with pocket screws. I'm going to cut the front stretcher for the couch out of this piece because I'm going to have a small arch relief. And as you can see, even on the camera, this board actually has some nice arched grain. So that'll help keep it nice and strong, even with removing that material. To lay out the long arch on the board, I marked the midpoint and then used a long piece of aluminum as a drawing bow. And if you don't happen to have a jigsaw, just use a bandsaw to cut the curve. To smooth out the cut, I used a card scraper. Hand sanding is also an option, of course, but that doesn't give me the same burning feeling in my thumbs as a good card scraping. Now onto the back frame. To make sure everything is going to fit well, I use relative measurements to make all of my cuts for this. I know some of you are relieved and some of you are disgusted, but this is how I'm putting it together. A few notes on these. First, I went and bought some of the fine threaded pocket screws for hardwood because they're going into hardwood. They bite a lot better. And the other thing is, as is the nature of a pocket screw, these don't go in straight, they go in at an angle. Because of that angle, a lot of times they like to pull themselves out of flat. So I've got these clamps down to make sure everything stays where I want it and doesn't pull itself you know, out of flush. The top piece is glued on, and I also use some brad nails to hold it together so I can keep on moving without clamps in my way. The bottom section of the back frame will entirely sit between the sides of the frame, so I drill the pocket holes and glue and brad the two pieces together before adding it to the sides. But first, the straw trick helps me clean up the squeeze out on the inside corner. I noticed this glue joint wasn't as tight as I wanted, so I added some clamps, and once I screw in the other side, I'll probably add more clamps. Time to start putting the pieces together. I've got a bunch of blankets padded this up so the handrest has somewhere to go. I set the back in place by consulting my model and measuring the back corner with the top, and then I also know I don't want it peaking here, so I've got that kind of flush. Then I also measured for the reference here, and the cool thing is about these arches, they reference a straight line point to point. It's how I designed them. So I can lay my tape here. And so long as I have these on the two points, I can set it there. 
Then from my model, I know where to come for the distance for the top of the front stretcher. and draw that line. With that marked, I can drill some pilot holes and start screwing it together. It's kind of scary. The normal screws I like to use sometimes break in really hardwood, so I spent a little bit more and got some stainless steel screws and I've pre-drilled. To provide plenty of load-bearing weight support to the back, and tie the backrest to the front is this piece, which is a little beefier, as you can see. I've got quite a few pocket holes drilled in it, three, and I'm using one and a half inch screws. They're a little bit longer to make sure I get plenty of penetration into the legs. Okay, that went, that went well. Better, better than I expected. I think this is actually gonna work. Now for this to like be a couch, obviously it needs to hold people. I haven't put the base in yet, but this back piece should be able to hold my weight in the middle or it's not strong enough. It's gonna work. If you're wondering what the cushions will sit on, this is it. I'm using a piece of walnut plywood that I'll edge band in walnut. My track saw and table saw make quick work of breaking it down to size and glue and brad nails handle the edge banding. To make sure everything is flush, I install the edge banding long and then flush cut it to fit. The back cushions will fit on slats, so I cut them and then brad nail them into place. Seeing how these fit really explains why the back frame is made the way that it is. I should wait, but I've just got to know. Oh yeah, this is going to look good. My wife actually made these cushions. that sits nice. It fits me perfectly, my feet touch. I don't feel like a kid. Man. And now for finishing. I'm using Total Boat Amber Halcyon finish that's then 20% and spraying it on. It is water-based, so off-camera I misted everything with water and sanded it down. Pre-finishing everything before assembly probably would have been better, but I was working against a deadline to bring this to a local show, so for speed, I sprayed it after assembly. And for the final assembly and reveal. Don't forget, this is part of a set, so if you want to see the coffee table and console table that match, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss them when I release those. Anyway, thanks for watching, and until next time, make time to make something.